Is the sub three hour marathon overrated? Is it holding you back? Is it making you play safe? Is the arbitrary number of three hours, 180 minutes, actually losing you a lot of joy in the sport and making you aim low? I've just watched the Berlin Marathon finish and I watched guys running 258, 259. Some of them looked as if they just had a walk in the park and others were scraping over the line just in time to, to break three hours. And for me, I just I cannot help but side with that second person because I feel that he is maximizing his potential or closer to maximizing his potential than the person running safe. And for me, I've crossed the line in marathons and felt within two minutes, I played that safe and I ran too easy in the first half. And although I ran a negative split, I couldn't get it back because I'd paced it. I was capable of way much more. Times when I've paced it horrendously looking back, or it looks like I've paced it horrendously, I've had to step off the track because I've gone out too quick, 25 to 33K. That's a, so much more of a better performance for me. So much more, because it's not about crossing the line. It's not about a time. It's about you maximizing your potential. That's what makes running, and that's what makes it the perfect metaphor for life, because if you're able to have the work ethic, to have the discipline, to make it happen, the drive, the dedication, the determination, all those words, you then insert that into every other aspect of your life and that becomes your identity. You're somebody who has a plan and it's a risky plan. You may fail, you may succeed, but you only win or learn and you're gonna go for it no matter what. That is a really impressive skill to have and that relationship to failure, if you wanna call it failure, is gonna take you way further and way faster in running, but way further in life. If we look at the results from Berlin today, and not everybody's finished yet, but this is sub three hour men, and we look at the ratios from male to female from 2023, so 66% of men, then we can estimate that 38,000 of today's finishers were men, which means this. So of the 38,000 male finishers today, more than 10% finished in sub three. 4,203 runners finished in sub three, which is great. But the window between two hours 50 and three hours, there's more than 2,000 runners. So 1,500 men finished in sub two hours 45. And 60% of those finished five minutes quicker in two, two hours 40. And of those, nearly a third finished 10 minutes quicker and did two hours 30. And of those two hours 30 guys, 25% of them ran sub 220. Now, for me, those ratios are completely off. And I think a lot of it is to do with self-belief and about what you aim for, but mostly, with marathon running, there's some talent involved. Of course there is, it's undeniable. But your work ethic and tenacity and mindset is so much more of a factor for running sub three hours. And if you can run sub three hours, you can run two hours 45. And as I've said on another video, it's my absolute true belief that any man and I'm not gonna go into the different categories of people that are not able to do this, but any man is possible of sub three hour marathon. It's possible for any man to run sub three hour marathon. So what happens with those ratios? For me, it's a case of, okay, perhaps the guys at the front, and you, you'd have to say that two hours 20, that's 17 minutes after the winner. You know, so when I finished my best marathon, yeah, I'm finishing and I'm happy and I'm two hours 21 and I'm, you know, I'm on top of the world. But I know that Eloy Kipchoge has finished 17 minutes or 18 minutes in front. So I know that I'm just a fast white guy. That's all I am. Like I'm not that pocket of East Africa that have completely dominated marathon running for the last 40 years. But when we look at history, last 40, 50, 60 years, 
sub three hours has always been a number. So despite all the advancements, as if that's a word, um, in nutrition and in the last seven, six, seven years in super shoes that give you, and the studies are there to prove, they give you between five, 10, 15% for some runners, despite those advancements, we're still aiming for a sub three hour marathon. For me, it doesn't make sense. And I think it goes to show just how many people, by those numbers, 10% of people who finish the Berlin Marathon, 10% of men who finish the Berlin Marathon today are running a sub three hour marathon. And that's including all the old people that, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, it's including all those. It's including those who are brand new to the sport, as we saw from the London data last year. Most people leading up to the marathon with averaging 50 kilometers a week, 30 miles a week, so they're not really doing the proper training. If you're running sub three hour marathon, the likelihood is 90, 95% of those people are doing the proper training. And so for me, I think they're aiming safe and I think the training is making them aim safe. So they're thinking of 415 per kilometer or 652 per mile and they're training towards that in the specific long runs and the interval sessions. I think they've got that mental pressure of getting in that club if they're somewhere close to it. They've got the cultural milestone of, okay, I'm a serious runner and I can tell my friends, I can tell my family, I can tell colleagues at work that I'm now a serious runner. There is reason for all this time that I'm spending away from the office. I think you've got that. And I think you see that very, very clearly when somebody has eventually broken, maybe the first time, eventually broken three hours for the marathon. It's very easy for them then to travel around the country to different marathons or travel internationally to different marathons and continually hit sub three. They know what the training looks like. They know what it feels like. They just do it over and over and over again, which you'd have to say is exactly the same as a sub four minute mile. Exactly the same. It's like 80 people within a six month period after Roger Bannister ran sub four, four minute mile. So it's exactly that for me. It's the mental barrier of, okay, serious runner. I'm in that club and there's, you know, there's even a Facebook group. But you know, it's, for me, I think the most important part of running is maximizing your potential. And it's, it's obviously, obviously it's project management and it's planning and it's your strategy and it's how am I gonna get there and how does this look like over the years? And then it's what am I actually capable of? And if you can ask yourself that, what am I actually capable of given the training? I'm not just going to put a time and then sort of like work back and go from there. Along the training program, what does my training suggest that I'm capable of? What should I be going out at? Am I prepared to go for it, have my hat in the ring and fail if it means that I have to go in the office on Monday and tell people, yeah, wheels fell off with 5K to go. Are you prepared to do that? Does it matter more to you what you think or more what other people think? I think that two hours 58 to three hours is massively populated by people who are aiming safe. And you could see it from those numbers. Two hours 45 to three hours, 2,000 people at Berlin Marathon. I would say 75% of them are aiming safe. And 25% of them, well done, because you've absolutely smashed it. And it's a great, great target to have if that's your potential.